By watching this video, I am assuming that you have already seen my previous tutorial, or at least have a PSP with firmware 6.60 or lower, along with the latest Pro Custom Firmware and PSP ident. If you do not have these things, then you can click anywhere on this video right now to go to my previous tutorial, or read the description for links to the required files. Hello everybody, this is my tutorial on how to install a permanent custom firmware on your PSP. So I'm assuming that your PSP can already run Homebrew, whether you followed my previous tutorial or you did it yourself or followed some other guide. Uh, doesn't matter, you just need to be able to load Homebrew. So the first thing that you're going to try and do is launch this CIPL flasher, which comes included with the Pro B firmware. So just start that up. And it should start up and tell you on my PSP Go, I know it's going to say that it doesn't support it, but if you have a PSP 1000 and some 2000s, then it will say that it will work, you can install it, and then you'll have a permanent custom firmware. Easy as that. So if that did work, then you can install it and you'll have a permanent custom firmware. It's that easy. You can stop watching this video. For those of us with uh, PSPs that that doesn't work on, you're going to have to do a bit more to get a permanent custom firmware. So you're going to have to start up PSP ident right there. Just If you don't have it, you can download it. But I have it on here, and if you followed my original guide, then you would have it, probably. Just start that up and wait for it to load. and it should show you all of this text. So the th only thing that you really need to pay attention to is that 05G right there. It will probably be a different number for you, but for me it's 05G, which means that I can install a custom firmware. If it is 05G or below, so like 04G, 03G, anything below 05G, then you will be able to install a permanent custom firmware. If it is above 05G, then just stop watching this video. You cannot get a permanent custom firmware. I'm sorry, it just won't work. So if it's 05G or below, then you can get a permanent custom firmware. If it's above 05G, so 06, 7, 8, whatever, then you cannot, and you will have to stop watching this video. Um, do not try and do what's on this video if you have above 05G, because you'll mess up your PSP. So uh, those of us who can continue, hit X to close that program. And then it will take you back to the PSP menu. So what you're going to have to do is downgrade your PSP. Um, I'm going to warn you, you, have, you can continue at your own risk, because this can break your PSP. It can completely break the PSP, so continue at your own risk. I'm not responsible if something goes wrong for you. As you can see, I have 6.60 right now, Pro B10, and I'm going to downgrade my PSP to 6.20, and I'm going to show you how to do that, because you need to be on 6.20 to install a permanent custom firmware. Alright, so to do this, we're going to have to go back to the computer. Alright, we are on the computer now, so to downgrade your PSP to 6.20, the first thing that you're going to do is open up your web browser and get the required files. You're going to need this downgrader, because you won't be able to launch the 6.20 updater because you have a later firmware. So get the latest version of the downgrader, right now it's 4.1, just click on that, then hit download. You'll also need the 6.20 update file. If the links for all this will be in the description. So uh, I have a PSP Go, so I'll get the one for PSP Go. If you have any other type of PSP, then you'll just get the regular update. Um, so download the run one that applies to you. For me, it's this one. And you'll also need to get the Pro Custom Firmware for 6.20 latest version which is pro-b10.fix1 as of recording this you'll need the 6.20 version click on that and download and then just this will be done in a couple seconds okay so once you have all of the required files just open up the folder where they are located 
and you can plug in your PSP now. Just let me do that. And open up the folder. It can be PSP. If you have a PSP Go, then it has to be the um, actual PSP memory. If you have any other type of PSP, it can just be the memory stick. So uh, once you have that, then you're going to uh, open up the firmware file. So open that up with WinRAR or 7-zip or whatever. And go through the folder and there will be an eboot.pbp. So on your PSP, you're going to go into PSP, Game, and then create a new folder called all caps update so new folder named update in all caps copy the eboot.pbp into that okay you can go back to the root of your PSP and open up the 620pro-b10 thing and then copy the PSP folder and SE plugins folder to your PSP. If it asks you to merge, do yes. And then if it asks you to overwrite, also replace. Alright, so then in your PSP, you should have the 620 Pro Permanent, CIPL Flasher, Fast Recovery, and Pro Update. You should have all those and you're also going to need the downgrader so you can close this and then open up the downgrader zip and here's the PSP folder in that there should be game and then in that there should be downgrader just copy that over to your game folder on your PSP or memory stick once that's there then you should be good to go back to the PSP and start the downgrade process so see you there Okay, so we are back on the PSP. I will just quickly show you that I have 6.60. I'm on Pro B10, but you can just be on the regular firmware to do this. You don't need to be on the custom firmware because the downgrader is signed. So I'm just going to say this once more. I already said it a whole bunch at the beginning, but if you have above 0.5G on that program that we checked, then do not do this because you will mess up your PSP. Those of us that have 0.5G and below continue at, the own, at your own risk because you can still mess up your PSP. So as you can see, we have the PSP update version 6.20 right there. However, if I try to start it, it's just gonna say the system software of your PSP system is version 6.60, there is no need to update. So it won't let us downgrade that way, however, if we go to this, which is the downgrader, then you can just start that up. And it should load that. Your PSP, well this is what it says, your PSP Go will require deletion of the resume game feature, proceed, X is yes, and R is no. You probably won't get that unless you have a PSP Go, so I'm going to hit yes. It's just a whole warning about stuff, just hit X. Give it a few seconds. There we go. So as you can see, this is the updater, 6.20. So it's going to let us downgrade. Just hit start. There's the whole thingy. Just over, accept it. Just like a regular PSP update. All the features and stuff over. And do not turn off the power cord or disconnect the yada yada yada. Just hit X. And 
it will start to install the firmware. So I'll just stop the video while it's doing that and come back to you when it's done. Um, update complete, press the X button to restart. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the X button. Sony Computer Entertainment. It's going to come up with this screen. This is normal, don't worry. It says settings information is corrupt. Press the Z press the O button to repair and restore default settings so you're going to lose your current settings. Just hit the O button. And it's going to take a while. Well, I don't really know. I can't remember how long it took last time I did this. But once it is finished, it will start back up. There we go. The brightness is probably, yeah, the brightness is turned up. I'm just going to turn that back down. You'll have to go through the whole PSP setup thing again. English. Okay, so once you've done setting up the PSP, then it will take you to the menu, and as you can see, system settings, all the way down to system information, I have 6.20. So the downgrade worked. Now all we have to do is install the custom firmware. You can delete this file. And you can delete the uh, downgrader as well because you won't need it. Okay, so now you're going to go to the uh, all right. So uh, sorry about that. Next, you are going to start the pro update file. Once that starts up, you just hit X to launch. It's going to write all the files. X to start. Oops. And so now you will be running the light custom firmware. To make it a permanent custom firmware, you will have to run the permanent bootloader patch. So start that up now. wait for it. Okay, so I'll read this out to you. By running this application, you accept all risk involved. Are you going to install the patch? X is yes and circle is no. Obviously, I'm going to say yes. It's going to say the original VA blah blah blah. It's going to say, are you going to have a test run on the fake VSH main? Strongly recommended. So hit X for yes. If it's all working, then you're going to start this up. Go back to the permanent bootloader and start it again. That was just to make sure that if something didn't go wrong, that it's all working properly. Yes, you're going to install the patch. No, because you already did it. Installation complete, exiting. It's going to exit back to this mm, PSP menu. And you should now, if I turn off the PSP, it's completely off. And then turn it back on, it should still have the custom firmware. As you can see, that was a complete turn off. It's back on now. Let's see if the custom firmware is still there. Just hit select. 
and it is it is all still there we'll do this go to these all of my ISOs show up and I can run them so yeah um, that's how to install a permanent custom firmware on your PSP if it didn't work for you then you probably did something wrong if you have any questions feel free to ask and uh, thanks for watching hopefully I helped okay there were just a couple things that I wanted to mention that I didn't uh, first of which is that you can now delete all of the, these files because you have a permanent custom firmware so you aren't going to need them anymore The other thing that I wanted to mention was that if you have the PSP completely shut off, and then you turn it on while holding the select button, I'm just going to hold that down and turn it on, then it should start up the official firmware, so not the custom firmware. So if for some reason you want to get onto the official firmware, then that should do it. As you can see, I can hit select and the menu doesn't come up. I can go over to my system settings and show you the system information. And it's just regular 6.2. It doesn't show the uh, Pro B10 thing or anything. So that is how you can get the official firmware. If for some reason you want to uninstall the custom permanent custom firmware, then you can turn on the PSP while holding the O button, the X button, select, and start all at the same time, and it will uh, it will uninstall. So that's, uh, that's all that I really wanted to say. Thank you for watching, and have a good day.